it's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to my series where I play as the USSR and give you kind of an overview. So this isn't a, a basic tutorial. Uh, I am going to talk about all the game mechanics because I want to play the game to its maximum potential. So I will not be holding back. And as I kind of go through this series, I'm gonna, probably going to speed up, okay? So be aware. Be very, very aware. Okay, so I'm going to grab all my tank divisions now and put them all on one army. So just left click on each tank division and then left clicking on where I want to put them. I don't think we've got that many actually. I think we've only got about seven or eight maybe. One, two, nine. Maybe we do have ten maybe. Nope, we've got more than ten. Yep, here we go. Okay, that's good. Okay, so let's talk about army experience. So, an army that has an experience level ranging from 1 to 5. 1 gets you minus 25% reduction in combat, ex combat damage. Uh, level 2 is, n is neutral. Uh, level 3 is 25% boost. Level 4 is a 50% boost. And then level 5 is a 75% boost. The veteran division as troops fight over time, they'll gain more and more experience. But there is a way that you can get to level 3 um, early. So, as you know, the question you're going to ask is, why are these level 1, Dave? It's because I've changed the divisions. If you make adjustments to the division template, it affects how much experience they do have. And also, you can deploy infantry divisions early. But then, obviously, they'll appear on... on they'll appear... Uh, not fully trained, so they won't be level 1. So they won't be level 2, they'll be level 1. So you don't want to do that. Well, you can sometimes do that. Um, so what we're going to do to get them to level 2 is we're going to select the, the army and tell them to exercise. So exercise does two things. It will burn through equipment. So you will burn more equipment with that. And also, uh, you will gain experience. And also, you'll gain a little bit of army experience as well. Just a little bit, like a little trickle. Um, now I think about it, I'm not actually going to do that because we're really still behind on guns. 171 days, 134 days. Okay, we are really far behind, so I don't want to do that. Okay, so I think we're going to assign more to artillery, more factories to artillery. Yep, I want to get the artillery sword, then we'll move on to regular guns. Probably don't need us that much on support equipment either. So what we're going to do as well is we're going to train up some more tank divisions. So let's get rid of all these templates that we're not using. So we're going to train another four tank divisions. So this is telling us that we've only got 42% of the equipment that we need. We need way more infantry equipment. We need more tanks. We have enough manpower though. So this is going to produce new tank divisions. We're going to tell them to spawn here in Kursk. And there we go. So right now we have a deficit of tanks of 192 days worth. And that quite equates to 875 tanks. We are producing them right now. We will start producing more as the game goes on. But for right now, that'll do this second. Okay, so at this point, there's not a lot happens until 1939. And Germany starts stomping Europe. We all know how history goes. So what we're going to do in the meantime is we're going to stage our own invasion. And I think what we'll invade... I think we're going to invade... I think we're going to invade Turkey... Yeah, I think we're going to go for Turkey. Or we could go for Romania. So, Romania has 70 oil, 4 steel and 6 aluminium. But Turkey is the home of chromium. Chromium and Tolia. Okay, so we, I think we're going to invade Turkey. So to do that, you have to do a, a few things. Now, declaring wars can be done on several terms. One, if you've got a claim on an enemy nation, you can declare war on them uh, straight away. Um... You also have events in the game that cause you to declare war on other countries. Like there's a war with Germany that will give you a reason to attack and occupy Germany. Uh, but what you can also do is justify for war. Now, communist and fascist nations can justify at any time uh, and then declare war. The more world tension there are, uh, the, the less time it will take to fabricate a claim. So we're going to justify a goal on Turkey, to conquer Turkey, to conquer a territory. And then we're going to fulfill that goal. So if you were to f if you were to say, I want to conquer this territory and then occupy all of Greece, Turkey, and then just take that one territory, it will only cause... Actually, that's, that's for justifying. 
So the cost, if we if we justified more, it would cost more political power, and it would take longer as well. I think what will happen is if you annex the nation and take the provinces that you requested in the justification, then it will suffer from less world tension other than annexing the full country. And if we did that, how much would that cost? That's just a ridiculous 420 days. Oh, there's a limit of how many you can you can request. So I'm just going to select from random province because we're going to we plan is to annex the full the full stretch of Turkey. That is the plan. So we're going to justify for war. It costs 46 political power. And it'll take 230 days, which is quite a substantial amount of time. Yet again, the lower the the lower the sorry, the higher the world tension is, the quicker you can justify a claim. So if you're at 100 percent something something takes like up 30 days or something like that. It's pretty quick. Uh, we have neglected a few things, okay? And um, what we've neglected is planes and we've neglected navies. Um, Let's look at planes for a second. So these are all active planes, squadrons, air wings that are assigned to an airport. So if I right click, this one's at Leningrad and it's here, this airport, the one with a circle around it. You can see ones that have not got a sign, they've not got a circle. So you can click on that and you can see there's specific air wings. I think learning about planes in this game is easier than learning about divisions because the, the planes can only be based on airports. So you can build airports with construction. Um, and then you assign them to a region of what order you want them to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the air wings that I've got. Because I want to make my own air wings. So I'm going to remove them. So this doesn't destroy the equipment. It just puts them into storage. Uh, where is it? Oh, the storage isn't here. Where's the planes? Oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. Anyway, so let's get rid of all the planes. So let's go through them all. Right click. And then get rid of the air wings. There's quite a few bunched on a few provinces. Get rid of them all. We're not actively going to be using planes in this playthrough. I'm not going to build any. I don't know, maybe some point in the late game, maybe I will. But for the time being, I'm not going to do that. So, what you can do is select an airport. And they see the capacity of the airport. This is a level 8 one, so it's a 16,000 planes maximum. And then you can assign an air wing. So all you do is left click on the, air, the airport, and then add the air wings to Minsk. In this case, we're going to add a really big fighter division. So these fighters are the same, but these are old, well, well these are all like interwar fighters, and these are like more modern planes. And you've got in, you've got bombers, naval bombers, and strategic bombers. Uh, I'm going to very lightly go over what each of them do. So fighters' jobs, our main job is to shoot down other fighter planes. Now, if there's no fighter planes to shoot down, you they will actively hit troops on the ground. That doesn't cause them damage. All it does is it reduces their defense, so they're more likely to get hit with a stronger attack. And also, as well, it reduces the movement speed of the enemy as well if you have air superiority. So that's the purpose of fighter planes. We're going to add all the fighters in now. All I was doing just then, I was holding down shift um, and clicking. And it adds oh, it adds 100. Excellent. So we're just going to put them all into one air wing. And if I click OK, that's a whole air wing that consists of uh, 188 I-16s and 470 I-15s. It'll take them a while to deploy to this area. They won't arrive until the 23rd of January. And when they all arrive, they're all here, then I can actually give them orders. I'm going to start, I'm going to start the game now and wait for them to arrive. And then I'll show you how to assign orders. So you can either press F3 or click on an airport. Or you can click on this plane icon here and it goes into the air view. Every one of these areas of the map is an air region. And in an air region, you can perform air missions. So what we're going to tell them to do is select our air wing, right click on Belarus. You can right click on the, the northern ones or the southern ones if you want. Depends if you've got the range, we'll talk about range later. And then you left click on the province in question, which is Belarus. And then you can assign specific orders. So this is just, these are the air wings in question and how efficient they're going to be and it's give them an order. So we can either air superiority. So your main job is to provide air support and shoot down other fighter planes. And as a secondary, take down enemy bombers and other planes. And there are interception, which is an attempt to prevent enemy planes from doing missions in the region, such as bombing or close air support. So this, their main mission then will be to shoot down enemy bombers. So we're going to put on air superiority. And you'll notice as well that this region changes color. Is it going to change color? No, it's going to be... It's going to be really obnoxious and not change color. Now, usually what will happen is it will show this bar is moving across as, as just showing that we have air superiority in this region. 
but it's not doing that for some reason. <laughs> Don't ask me why, I have no idea. Usually it'll show up on the map as well. So it actually shows on this view that this appears as green. Yeah. It shows the efficiency of the mission as well. And that's just an example. So the other planes available that we've got that start the game, interwar bombers are bombers. So what that means is they can do multiple roles. Um, I'll land, I'll take them in. They're still being deployed, but I can give them orders. Uh, they can bomb close air support, so they can actively pursue bomb troops on the ground, actively damaging equipment on the ground. They can do strategic bombing, which they'll damage buildings, factories, infrastructure, and therefore you need to repair them through the construction window. And finally, you can do a port strike, which actually means the plane will attack ports and try and hit bo boats in port. They're the options for that. Also, naval bombers are a simpler version of a tactical bomber. Uh, which can only do two things. Naval strike, which is actively hitting ships out to port, and port strike, hitting ships in port. Uh, they do, they're do. they more effective at that role, though, because they're a... I guess the way to think about it is that if a plane has a single purpose, it's more effective at that single purpose. But if it has multi-roles, such as a, a tactical bomber, then it's not as effective at that specific roles. And finally, we've got strategic bombers. These are really, really big planes, and they're the ones that do bombing duties, bombing runs, and the only thing they can do is strategic bombings, which is damage buildings, infrastructure, and industry. So you can see these are kind of sole purpose planes uh, for one particular role. Fighters, I suppose you can, can put them in the same bracket as well, because they're the only planes that can do air superiority. And tactical bombers um, are kind of multi-purpose. So they're good, but they're not as flexible, because they cannot do as many... Um, they're not as effective as the roles you assign to them. And that's pretty much it, really. They're all been assigned now, moving over. There are other kinds of planes, but in this playthrough, for just for the sake of making it nice and simple, I'm not going to make any planes. I honestly have a real bit of a grief with this game. I think I think the planes aren't strong enough. They need to buff planes and make them tougher. And it tells me it feels like for what you have to do to select an airport, assign an airwing, wait for the airwing arrive. It feels like it's just lots of steps, you know. And it, to me, it feels like it would be a lot easier if planes were strong and then it would give you more an incentive to micromanage. I've, I've digressed here because we're, talk, we're talking about um, how I like the game change, which is not where I wanted to go with this. Anyway, uh, so you can select the region and tell them to give, take off the order. So that means they're going to be on base, but they've not got orders. You can do the same thing by assigning them and not having an order. So they're just actively in the region, but they don't have active commands. Uh, I can talk about those other buttons later. I think one thing that's confusing about air battles, with land battles you can actually see them happening. You can see combat happening, you can see troops moving back and forth. With air battles it's not as visual. So what you do is you select an air region and then click on details and this will give you a breakdown of how many troops were bombed, how many planes were lost. So you can get kind of a readout of how, how you feel this region is performing. And in this case, you can see bomb troops. These are all ones against you, and these ones for you. It's just killing any bombers and town fighters and bombing buildings and whatnot. It, it is a bit confusing with planes because you don't actually get to see the combat happen. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you can assign lots of old fighters to a region. They get all annihilated, and then you come back, and there's no planes left. So you've, you've got to keep an eye on it, really. And you can see on this graph, depending on what you're losing, if you are beating the enemy or not. Because what you'll find yourself in situations, let's say, with the English Channel. With the British Air Force, is you'll find they'll be fighting in the English Channel, and there'll be like 2,000 fighters versus 2,000 fighters, and it's difficult to see if you've got an advantage of your enemy. Because you think about it, when it comes down to it, if you've planes versus planes in active combat, it's going to come down to how who is producing those planes the quicker is the one that's going to be the winner. God, that's so depth. I'm going so much in depth and more than I need to be. Anyway, you can produce planes here, and these are all the different kinds of planes. The only plane that we've not got is transport planes. These are solely planes for the purpose of using paratroopers, which are a special kind of infantry division that you can use to make paradrops to land on. Um, they're clearly effective against attacking like the UK islands, as well as the Japanese mainland as well. Wow, we've gone through so much. Uh, I think we should talk about navies a little bit as well. I don't want to go into specifically what navies... Uh, what, how your navy composition should be. I, I don't really want to go into that. Let's just move these guys here. I'm going to strategic redeploy and then move here and they're all going to move there. Um, yeah, so you've got different kinds of ships. These are individual fleets of ships. You can assign admirals the exact same way as you would normally and you can merge them together. Uh, for the purpose of this, what my honest advice would be for you guys is just to merge them all together into one super fleet. Be aware that this fleet here based in the Black Sea can't leave through this region. Because uh, Turkey's blocking it. And that is one of the reasons why we're invading Turkey. We'll see later. So, 
I'm selecting all the navies and I'm going to merge them all together. So actively they'll move together now and merge. If I have a look, there's a few that I've missed, I think. Oh no, these are the ones here. So we'll merge these together. And eventually what we're going to do is take Turkey then we can access this strait here. There's a few straits in this game. There's one here, there's one in the Suez Canal, there's one in Gibraltar here. And, and uh, also I think there's, there's one here as well, the Panama Canal. So if you have control of that region, the enemy can't move troops through it. Okay, more else to do now. So what you do, planes and boats are very similar. You, you actively set a role for them and you select the region. So each one of these is a sea region, we could say in the Black Sea. This fleet will be put on patrol duty and we select the fleet and now they'll actively do that role. Very similar to planes, you literally select them and you tell them to do a role. Now there's patrol which they spread out really wide, that means if they engage in combat they could get swarmed if there's more of them, but they're more likely to detect enemy boats. There's search and destroy which the boats will be more tightly together, which means that if they are going to engage the enemy, they're going to be more prepared, therefore more trips will engage simultaneously, therefore more damage will be done and you're less likely to lose, but the disadvantage is you're less likely to detect enemy boats because they're not spread out as far therefore uh, they're less likely to spot enemy less likely to spot enemy boats convoy raiding is self-explanatory they will re actively pursue and hit convoys and convoy escort is the exact opposite you actively pursue raiders that are trying to hit your convoys and hold is big go back to base there's lots of buttons here i don't want to go into them because there's so many uh we'll maybe come back to those later maybe Alright, is there anything else I need to do? I think we'll continue the game now. I think what we're probably going to do is we're going to probably assign some tank divisions down here. So what we'll do is we'll actively say this is a high priority front. So make sure these guys are all on the same front. We'll move our tank divisions down as well. And I think what we'll probably do is move them all here as well. One thing to be aware is, as we experienced at the start of the game, if you click on supply, you can put too many troops in one region and cause a supply bottleneck, which will cause attrition and it will cause the AI to spaz out as well and get confused. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. So we're going to move these troops down here. I, select, I selected strategic redeployment and that's selected here and they're moving down. If I look on supply route, nope, the supply is still good in this region, so we're still good. What we're going to do is put tanks on this front here and actively give them the same role. So we're going to have two lots of troops. What we'll do initially is we'll attack with our mounted infantry first and then we'll attack with the tank second. So the, the mounted infantry will attack into here, get a bit of an advantage because it's all hills. And then as the war goes on and they get beaten up, I'll throw the tanks in to smash them through. So we need to assign a general to this. We've not talked about generals and field marshals, have we? Okay, let's talk about generals and field. There's two kinds of commanders. There are, well, I guess you can include admirals as well, I suppose, but they're not on land. So land, there's generals and there are, uh, there are field marshals. Field marshals have no limit of how many divisions they can control, okay? Um, but generals can only have a maximum of 24 divisions. If they have more than 24 divisions, they will suffer a penalty of having too many divisions. What you'll actively see is that field marshals are more towards commanding a large number of troops over a large area. As you'll find over time as they're in combat, they'll gain traits that will benefit them for a huge global offensive. Now, generals on the other hand tend to be more beneficial for kind of niche roles. Like this guy is a panzer expert. You'll never get the panzer expert as a part of a field marshal. And you'll never get old guard. Actually, maybe you can get old guard for general. I'm not sure about that. Now, there's a few others as well. Let's see if there's any others. There's a winter expert and there's a commando as well. Get some supply out of uh, out of uh, enemy lines. As you can see over time, you can see he's developing new traits because he was involved in the Spanish Civil War, so he's gained new ideas. He hasn't learned them yet and he can't benefit from them until he gets to 100%, but he's 33% 33% towards a hill fighter, so that's a nice benefit. So, <coughs> for this mountain infantry, we're going to find someone that's got high skill. And this guy looks really good. He's a panzer expert, but we're not got no tanks, but it doesn't matter. We'll still be able to use his skills in combat. So as I said to you, we, we put these on a low priority to begin with, didn't we? But now we've switched it to high priority. So what you'll find now is actively infantry equipment and artillery will be prioritized towards these divisions. As you can see over time, the artillery just disappeared. And the infantry equipment's getting adjusted as well as we make troops and actively give them to these mountain divisions. Okay, so we've got some new research complete. I think we're going to focus on more production, retention cap plus 5% to 10%.
let's talk about production efficiency. So when you make a new line of production, let's go for an extra line of, let's say fighter planes. And let's assign maybe one factory to that. You will be, these will start producing at an incredibly low speed. And over time, as the production cap goes higher and higher, aka that the people in the factory become more efficient at producing this product, um, they will be able to produce them quicker. So the maximum cap right now is 75%. If I go for that research, it will increase the cap to 80%. So that means the potentially maximum efficiency for our factories will increase to a maximum level. So we'll be producing more. So yet again, as I said to you earlier in the game, that is a really improve, big improvement. You want to go for that as early as you can. And what you'll find is that... I don't really need the planes, by the way. Um, as the game goes on, you'll find you need to produce more and more and more. And you can also, as well, while the production's going through, you can actually switch to a different platform. Like, if, for instance, you want to switch to an old tank. So the question is, what? why would you want to switch to an old tank? Well, the reason why you'd want to do that is because they, they cost less to produce. Um, and that will mean that you'll be able to produce more of them if you're having an issue producing them. Um, it's just an option for you there. And you can also switch out. So you can switch out this to a different kind of equipment. And the advantage of that is you don't, um, you, you be able to continue with the same production efficiency. You do lose some production efficiency, um, but you don't lose all of it other than creating a new brand new line. I feel like this is really complicated to understand, but as you can see over time, as I speed the game up, the production efficiency is slowly ticking up. So as the time goes on, they produce more and more as they get more efficient at producing that specific task. Okay, armament effect has complete. Okay, so we have a choice right now. We can either go for collective propaganda or positive heroism. I'll be honest with you, my favorite is positive heroism because you get to get a guy who gets an attack bonus and defense bonus for tanks, which I love. And you can also see it leads down the tree here to progress cult, extra research reduction, more recruitable population, and extra research slot. And also gives you aviation call that gets you extra tech bonuses for air techs. And also lets you to go for this one. The new Soviet man that lets you go on kamikaze missions. I don't be honest with you, I've never done a kamikaze mission. I'm not actually sure how effective they are. I'm going to have to try that one day. Or alternatively, you can go for collectives, propaganda that gives you military schools, uh, worker culture, more construction. Woman, women, woman, woman in aviation, women in aviation. Um... And also gains your research slot, more more infrastructure. This one's a good one as well. Transformation of nature gives lets you produce some rubber in Siberia. Um, which is pretty cool because you don't produce any rubber in the Soviet Union, you have to import it. So we're gonna go for positive heroism. Yep, let's do it. So we're gonna max speed right now, I'm waiting for something to happen. New talented officers. So what's happening now is because I'm suffering from the purge. Over time, um, until 1940, ouch, um, I will suffer from a penalty to my organization and also research costs for doctrines. It's trying to emulate the fact that I've purged so many of my key skilled officers from the ranks of the Soviet Union and therefore I'm suffering from a penalty because of the guys who are actively in my armed forces aren't as skilled. So lowest penalty of officers purged. So now it's a less of a, an amount. It will go. It will still keep reducing over time until the 6th of October when it fully gets removed in 1940. Okay, one thing to note is our first line of infantry has just completed, and it's here. Two brand new infantry divisions. What's thing to do? You can either right click to assign them to an army, or you can hold down control and then click on the battle plan and that will assign them to the general that has that battle plan and they'll be assigned orders to that battle plan. Otherwise, if I just right click, they will actively have orders. In that case, you have to assign it anyway, which is either this key or holding down control. I like to hold down control and then click and they'll actively join the mission what the rest of them got now. Excellent. We've got some more political power. What do we spend it on? So what have we got? Uh, national unity bonus is kind of cool. Same ideological monthly opinion. That's a good one. We'll probably go for that later. We'll probably get Republican Spain to join us. Uh, civilian factories boost production. Nah, can't go for these because we've eliminated them in the purge. I don't know why they're still there though. This will move us towards democracy and fascism. We're not going to do any of that. Um, so we don't really need any of those. I think what we're probably going to do is go for this guy. 
but we can't go for it until we get positive heroism. There's no point, there's no disadvantage to waiting because we're, we're going to have that political power anyway. So I'll wait for positive heroism to finish and then we will go for our armor expert. It's an armor genius. Anyway, radio is complete. So, what can we go for here? I think the next thing to go for is to construction again, because it's 1937, we can go for construction. This will improve our production of factories. And we're actually a bit low now, so let's give them some more orders, more factories to produce. There we go, lots of orders for factories, brilliant. Okay, let's have a look at Turkey. So, we are still fabricating a claim on them, and it will be complete. It doesn't actually say when it's going to be complete. Usually a hover over. Oh, there you go. Expected to finish on the 5th of September, 1937. So we've got another six months to go. So it's 26% complete. So I'm just going to wait for the game to fast forward now. There's nothing really we're missing. Uh, I did ask all my fleet to merge. There you go. All my fleet now is 32. Where are the other fleets? Right click, by the way. It just takes you to them automatically. Just merge those up. Don't need the planes, so we'll get rid of those for the time being. We'll we'll organize them when we're ready to attack. It might be a good idea to have the planes based here. Yeah, let's do that actually. So we've got six thousand planes based here. We have five seventy here. Maybe we'll six hundred planes total. So I'm just adjusting the overall size of the wing there. Um, what I'll do, they'll they'll supply the rest of the planes into there. Then what we'll do is we'll add extra bombers. There you go. What I'm going to do now is assign them here on this region of Asia Minor. Select Asia Minor and give them a role. So we're going to go for air superiority and also close air support. Be aware that these are really old planes, so they don't have very good range. So if you look really closely, the efficiency is pretty bad. The mission efficiency is only 20%, so they probably can only go for over this area. So they won't get much of a bonus. It'll be a pretty weak bonus, to be fair. But hey, it's better than nothing, I suppose. We are attacking into mountains, so any benefit to reducing enemy's defense with air superiority, which what fighters do, is going to be a benefit. Okay, what are we doing? Yep, we're just waiting, weren't we? We're waiting for our national focus to complete. So, right, okay, missing equipment. So, right now, we've assigned our planes, planes to this region, and uh, we sa it says actively we... Okay, what I've done is I've actually assigned too many planes. Let me just do that again. What we'll do is we'll trickle in 30 planes. And then we'll make it a nice even 600. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. It's already reinforced them. Because what I did there is I reinforced them. Never mind. Who cares? Okay. The game was letting me know that I, 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 was, I was low on planes. But yeah, I, no, the, the game does sometimes, sometimes does that. It shows you a notification message when it's a day out. A, it's a day out. Anyway, we'll, we'll tell them to turn off their mission. Because what will happen is over time, because they're using planes, they're more likely to get in accidents. And if they're in accidents, that means we're going to lose planes, so we don't really want to do that. There you go. This is another notification to let you know that we're justifying a claim on Turkey. I think we're going to check on logistics now to check how far behind we are on guns. We are 106 days behind. Artillery, we are 15 days behind, so we've catched up on the artillery. Tanks, on the other hand, we're 93 days behind. If you look at deployment, we are training our new troops, but we are quite far behind on the tanks. We're probably going to make another line of tanks eventually. You can see over time the retention's going up and also the production's getting higher and higher and higher until it actually hits a maximum efficiency. What what ideally you don't really want to do is when you hit maximum efficiencies, you don't want to adjust it. Because if you adjust it, you're going to lose that efficiency, so therefore the factories aren't going to be as good. So for instance, if I was to take off all of these tanks and put them on a different platform, I'd lose so much reti uh, retention for that efficiency. So therefore it, it would give you a huge benefit temporarily as the efficiency catched up and went faster and faster and faster. Wanted to add on one motorized there. How many motorized have we got? 667, that's brilliant. The Hindenburg disaster, another event that doesn't actually do anything. Positive heroism is complete. Great, so now we can go for either socialist realism, gives extra political power, progress cult, or aviation cult. So we're going to go for progress cult because that reduces research time. The earlier you get that, the better. And top that off as well, we are going to hire a new man which is going to be our armor specialist. 
which gives he's an armor genius. It gives 15% attack, 15% extra defense. That is absolutely huge. That is a really big boost. Concentrate industry is done. We can move on to a different research now. So this is a little bit ahead of time, 938. So that would have a penalty. Uh, it's not a bad penalty, but I still would prefer to avoid it. Okay, what else have we got? You're probably going to be better off um, making your own... Uh, looking through these texts yourself to see how they benefit you. You can get a kind of guide of what I'm selecting because I kind of know what the best ones are, but you can you can go from there. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we are going to focus on mobile doctrine. So this will give us extra breakthrough for tanks, 20%, extra movement speed for every division, uh, less organization loss when moving, and 50% faster planning speed. That's huge. And we're going to start researching that immediately. So it's making me aware that if I go for Mobile Doctrine, I lose the first search in Mass, Ass Mass Assault, which I'm completely willing to do. Alright guys, that's pretty much the end of this episode. We are going to invade Turkey next episode. So what have we learned today? We've learned about aircraft, we've learned about Navy, we're learning a little bit about production efficiency, and uh, also learning a little bit about Army experience as well. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want more, please comment. Let me know in the chat what you'd like to hear, anything that I've said that's confused you. And also remember to like and subscribe. And also be notified when I upload next by the little tick box on desktop, or the clicking on the bell icon on mobile. Guys, have a good day, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.